Welcome to the Bomb Bad Cast. This is it. Woo! Wow. Can't believe it. Can Can't believe it. Scotty. You believe it. What? Can you believe it, Scotty? I tell you what, man. Um, This has been, it's been a long season. It's yeah. been a t- it's actually been a short season, but it, you know it's been a it's been a, a ride, a good yeah. ride. And I tell you, man, I'm I am, I think after all this is all over, man, I I think this calls for a large and oh. <laughs> delicious and cold that? hard Mountain Dew. That's oh what we're gonna God. go for. Here we go. Ah, oh, there, wow. there we go. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna do the dude, but we're gonna do it hard. <laughs> Look, I gotta say a few things. I've been um. Oh I'll admit God. it. I'll admit it. I've been a little. I've been going a little awol. Uh, I went on a um, went on a to Las Vegas trip for my school, my work. I went to the Sphere. Had a great you've time. been, you've been, been making going. it around. You've been making the yeah. rounds. So say. then I making the rounds. Then I I went to Golf Shores, Alabama with my family. Had a great five day vacation with them. Spent a lot of time with my cousin's son Aiden. Hang out with my cousin Troy. We all watched the Acolyte. Me, my uncle, my cousin, his son. And uh, our other uncle, and it was a very good moment. I have a, I have a video that I can show you later, and it's it's of uh, Aiden going, and he, he asked to film this. I'll actually play it right now on my phone. He asked okay. for us okay. to do this, and so shout out to Aiden right here. But um, shout out he, to Aiden. Aiden's great. Aiden was at the wedding. He was the ring bearer for Katie and I, and this is by his request. This is not by me making him want to play this. Like he he's like, this is what I want, Uncle. He calls me Uncle Sock, and so this is what Uncle Sock, Sock played straight from Uncle Watch. Socks. Here we Straight go. from Uncle Snox Archives. Here this we is go. by his request. By his request. Alright, three, two. It's Star Wars night. That's what he wanted to hear. That's what he Whoa! wanted to hear. We watched the acolyte. That, it was beautiful. Beautiful moment. That is immense. That is immense. I, I love that. I discovered one thing too. Beer salt right. will ruin you. That I learned the hard way. That's beer for a whole salt? Beer salt will ruin you. Okay. What the hell is a beer ruin salt? <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Our wonderful it's guest amazing. host. Right, right. Our amazing, wonderful yeah. guest host. I'm so excited. My, the last one. <gasps> not forever, obviously. Maybe maybe for like no. a couple of months. Maybe for a couple of months. Joragana um, has been such a beautiful help. Handsome help. Studly help. Um, Jerry, how, how would you describe Joe these past few months let's be real it's past june july um, and june tremendous yeah. um throbbing um and sensually wet <laughs> i oh think is, God, yes. is how joe has been i think he's been just a little a little sensually moist and i i oh. appreciate that about him no i look joe has seriously seriously in all seriousness we need to bring we need to bring him in mm-hmm. but um joe's been just an absolute dream to work with uh this past season and um i honestly think joe listen joe should come back more often frankly because you know i mean he comes comes back all the time he comes on mine it's inhumane that you keep him in that dog cage all the time so i know i'm I'm just i'm worried about his uh his arthur he him developing arthritis too early (laughs) it's okay he'll i give him i make sure he gets daily lotions the one and only Joey tight pants. Oh, Joe. oh my gosh. I can't believe it's coming to an end. Oh, I'm so used to coming and coming and coming. I'm not used to ending. That's true. Hi, right. Thank you so much for having me. And don't worry about me, Jerry. I'm it's got to make sure I'm fully lubricated at all times and fully okay. stretched out. So when he shows I me just... that little box, I feel super comfortable. I feel Good. ready. Aww. I feel like that's where I'm meant to be. That's your meant way. to be. Locked like away, naughty, naughty, naughty little boy. That is like a little princess. That's like precious. A filthy little that's doll. precious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love you, Joe. Joe, do you like beer salt? I love beer and I love salt, so why not just put them together? I like, the, yeah. I was gonna say I like those two things. Um, not sure if the both together. of them together will be great for my health. What, what the? Hell? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna teach you later. Um. Not only do we have a recurring, uh, a rotating host like Joe, who's done this every episode so far, but we have someone for the very first stream we did on this show. What? Oh my gosh, yes. What? One of my favorite people. One of the biggest sweethearts in the Star Wars fandom, but she'll also tell you like it is, and it's beautiful, and it's special to me. The one and only, Ray Goodbye. And you did, you're not even ready. You're not even ready for this. 
outfit. Here we go. Get ready. <gasps> oh! oh! It's giving mother. It's okay, I don't even know if I can fit my headphones over, over the wig <laughs> lump on my head. Um, hi! Hi, it's oh beautiful. my god. Can you get closer, Reagan? I want everyone to see the details on the face for those that don't see it. Look at this. The out the whole outfit. Beautiful. The the actual dots and everything that the uh the sisters wear on Brindock. Oh my god. Gorgeous. Wow. How much time did you spend on that? That is like absolutely incredible. Well, this is if you can see that there is uh that I sewed, I had to cut holes when I did use this cape for May. So yeah. I, I had to sew it back up. This is duct tape. This is puffy paint. And I have to shout out um, the employee at Michael's in <laughs> Chelsea, who I came in like absolutely frustrated because I bought all these stick on jewels and I couldn't get it. They weren't working. And I told yeah. her exactly what I was doing. And she was just like, like aisle 59, like fourth parallelogram, like how you can keep that information in your head. I don't know, but she was so chill. She knew exactly where to point me, gave me the right thing. Um, so the shirt worked out scary, perfect. And I'm really, really happy. Um, but yeah, no, it didn't. It actually was not all that time consuming. This is stapled and not sewn. So it's like wow. itching the shit out of me. Um, yeah. But uh, Reagan, I'm gonna yeah. be real with You're you. Saying that like it doesn't make any le it, any less impressive. <laughs> yeah, it makes that's it actually amazing. more impressive that you are held together with puffy paint and. <laughs> and staple. I do have I have like a, I have my like a my cartilage in, but you can't see mm -hmm. it under the headphones. I want to say this though, um, Reagan, you could really pull this off at a convention. It works so well on you. Like honest to God, like these Jedi robes are absolutely. Kind of I would wear these to work, but I would not wear these to a convention because they are not the the quality of that but what you yeah. did on i wouldn't wear time, these outside of my apartment i'm just being honest i, I wouldn't honest. wear these outside the bedroom oh damn <laughs> our next <laughs> guest host which i'm so excited for um pump for uh, has guest. done has done every finale of live action shows i'm pretty sure we've done with, with Adam since Frazier. book of boba fett boba fett We've done, um, actually, I'll let him tell you. Adam, Adam knows more than we do. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite people in the space, uh, Adam and I text, I would say, like every other couple of days. And Alien Romulus is coming up, and I'm so excited Ugh. to talk about that with Adam as well. Oh my God. We, we're so going to talk about the podcast. That is, we'll do that in August. Adam, we're going to have you back in August, guaranteed. We'll, we'll talk about um, some alien. Yeah, 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 alien. yeah. Anyway, uh, welcome to the show, as always, the one and only Adam Frazier. Adam, what's going on, baby? Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. I am centrally dry, by the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's fair enough. amazing. That's fair enough. Good. Good. I'm Adam, out of paper towels, though. So, you know. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to talk about this wild ass finale. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, Uncle Sock was my stage name back in the day. So <laughs> <Good. that> <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Which ones have you done with us? You did Book of Boba Fett. Uh, yeah, Bo Book of Boba Fett, uh, Mandalorian season three, mm -hmm. Obi Wan, mm -hmm. Ahsoka, mm -hmm. and here we are wow. now. Wow, rounding it out. How I beautiful know. is that? Okay, so oh, someone said, "What is beer salt?" Do I have to explain this? Yes, I'll explain this. My cousin Hold Chandler on. asked, "What's what's beer salt?" Look at this. Beer salt is a great thing. So for those that don't know, you can buy at like convenience stores or bodegas, like they say in fancier places. You can buy that. Put it on your Michelob Ultra, your Miller Light, your Coors Light, whatever it is. And it just adds this so just... much flavor to it's like lime flavored. It's like kind of high concentrated salt okay. on your beer. Jerry, I'm gonna send you ten dollars to go buy that once wow. your parents. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that's sure you know. That's what I'm gonna do tomorrow for Friday. Yes, yes. I'm gonna look for jobs, go buy beer salt, and hopefully the two don't, the twain shall not meet. Yeah, it's gonna it's change your thing. life. It's gonna change your life. But anyway, <laughs> um, this episode, the ultimate, the end all be all. A lot of people were really worried it wouldn't stick the landing, and we want to go through it real quick and just hear your thoughts. Did it stick the landing, and why? What's up with Jerry? Did it stick the me? landing? Me, little old me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, it stuck. It stuck the landing. I think harder than than most things have yet because I was not. Uh, things kept happening, and I kept going. Well, surely it's the end of the episode. And yes. I would look, and it, there was still so much left. Um, little uh, 
background into what how I was watching. I so I had my family over. Uh, we were gonna all gonna watch it, but they decided that 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern was too late for them to stay up before they had to get up and drive the next day. So okay. I was holed up in my daughter's room, watching <laughs> on my laptop, and um, shouting. Uh, obscenities. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, from the from the get go, I mean, I won't dive too much into like all the little uh, gooey bits that we're going to be talking about over this, uh, you know, next hour or two or, mm-hmm. or, two or whatever. But um, I mean, I just kept going, fuck, damn, hell, <laughs> no. <laughs> with my, while my Christian parents were trying to sleep, you know, in the, uh, like, yeah. with one wall between us and everything like that. And so it was, uh, I think I, my sister came in at one point ask, to ask me a question. I thought I had woke up the, uh, her, my two-year-old nephew. <laughs> <laughs> We were good, but it was I. I. It it's hard to really quantify for me, like because I I think all the finales have been pretty pretty special. Same. This has been my favorite so far. I think though. Yeah, that's beautiful. I want to get more yeah. into that later. That's awesome, Joe. Please. Hi. How are you? Where what? How did it stick the landing, baby? Did it stick it? Did it stick? It was very sticky for me. It was sticky. It was moist. It was damp. It was all the things. I <laughs> I had an amazing time this entire season. I tend to be the type of person who just sits down, and watches these Star Wars shows, and loves it. I'm, I, 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 and this is no exception. This has definitely been my favorite Star Wars live action television show, yeah. um, altogether. And the finale was very satisfying for me. I felt like it answered all the questions I needed it to, but then gave me some more and gave me some more longings. Like I'm ready for them to make love in that uh, ocean as the waves wash over Kymer's abs and booty cheeks. I'm I'm ready to see it in season two, baby. And I and I, I want um, Uncle um, Plagueis to be watching from behind a rock and saying, "Fuck yeah!" Like, oh my also- god. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh my god, I'm very excited. I love it. I can't it. wait to get into the nitty gritty of that too. Me too. Uh this show for you, Reagan. I know you were very excited to cover it our first stream. Here we are in our last stream. Did it stick the landing? I let me first say also, um, I was really excited to go into this entire series with zero expectations. Um, and I was surprised and intrigued and like gripped throughout the entire thing uh but i you know i like i had all my snacks and i i like i made sure my phone wasn't too near me because i didn't want to be distracted the whole time and i was just like enraptured the entire time and i really didn't like i did kind of know where the main twist was going to go because it felt like it was building through that the entire time um and kind of both even though both reveals i did expect like the the one that we weren't sure was going to happen i i fucking screamed i like screamed Mm -hmm. through a shoe um i didn't even (laughs) touch my food like i literally did not touch my food because i was like the like the popcorn dot gif i was just like like the (laughs) entire time um you know, it just like the one thing I will say that it maybe didn't do for me, which I feel like probably is not the case for everybody else. It did not make me I didn't feel deep emotions probably for anybody but Saul. Same. Um, like I didn't I just didn't feel like I necessarily connected. But the, but then also the Raylo in me at that that little hand clasp at the end. Mm. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. I was do- I was rolling off the floor. I was like, I'm going to be a problem again for like the next seven years. This <laughs> yes. <is bad> <laughs> a problem. <laughs> that's fantastic. No, Reagan, that's awesome because they- this show is giving us things other people really wished for, like, you know, Raylo's in particular, from like the Kylo Ren and Ray relationship. You know I mean, like we, everyone was really hoping some dark side things would fall into place and they just haven't. But this show, man, what? What? I do want to just quickly address, since yeah. I said this like oh, this morning on on Twitter, um, after all of the haters got you know done ejaculating all over the Star Wars <laughs> comment section, um, a lot of them were like, "This isn't canon. None of this is canon." And I have to just say again, unless your paycheck comes from Lucasfilm, <laughs> you don't get to make that call. That's not your no. decision. Sure. You cannot decide. Sure. You can't announce that from your basement. So again, <laughs> go outside. But well, luckily, look. yeah, luckily our shill paychecks do come from Lucasfilm. <laughs> they do. So we can say it is canon. 
Yes. And yes. thank you, uh, Mommy Kennedy, for my money. Yes. Yes. Thank you Still for keeping us in fine Jedi robes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> No, Reagan, I completely agree with you, and and I, I called it from day one. The fact that Grifters hated this show so much, and having it be the show they introduced, like the most dude bro Sith in, you know, Plagueis is just the most <laughs> icing on the cake. I said that since day one. I'm like, this is the show that's gonna make everyone super super pissed off for no reason, and then they're gonna have to go back on their words when S Plagueis is on season two, mm -hmm. and he's a big part of it. But anyway, oh Adam, Adam, you haven't had a chance to be on these streams. Uh, yeah. for the coverage of all of this did this show you know the entire thing that is you know the acolyte from episode one and two all the way to now did it stick the landing and then what did you like all of it really we, we don't know or none of our viewers actually know this answer yeah absolutely um i think it it accomplished what it needed to do which is mm -hmm. um create a new anchor point in the star wars timeline to uh get people interested in exploring uh, which, yeah. you know, the, the High Republic uh, as a publishing initiative has got a certain portion of the fan base excited. But to bring that into the live action realm uh, and kind of stake a claim here 100 years before Phantom Menace, I think now we've got an area that um, we're going to start filling in the gaps all the way up to Phantom Menace now. Ooh, you know, it, so um, I think the the finale was absolutely successful at paying off the, the character arcs that were introduced here with Osha and May and, and certainly Soul and stuff, but also giving you a Yoda appearance and a Plagueis appearance and, and setting up some things for a possible season two and kind of just like teasing you and exciting you for what's to come. And I definitely want to talk about later some things that, that uh, Reagan touched on with um, the – the Raylo kind of thing of giving fans what they maybe didn't get with the sequel trilogy and how Lucasfilm has actually been doing that a lot lately with other projects outside of the sequel trilogy. And now people that were maybe upset, they didn't get that romance and that kind of uh, enemies to lovers trope played out fully. They're going to get it in this show. Yeah, dude. So. Yes. Great point, man. And, and look, a lot is is going to be said tonight, obviously, but a lot's going to need to be said about what this show did really well. And I think I think all of us could agree that it did some of those things like strikingly well. You know what I mean? Like from romances to like paying the Jedi in a new light, you know, and really seeing how all that played out. I um I my anticipation for this show was at an all time high. The finale was at an all time high. It was one of those ones where I don't know if y'all do this, but I like I, I pace a little bit like right before these things air. Cause I'm like, I'm thinking like, what do they have to wrap up? Cause book right. of Boa Fett had the same exact thing. Um, and, or had a lot to wrap up. Ahsoka had a lot to wrap up and like Kenobi had probably the most weight. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, I was just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Like, how is this all going to wrap up? And it wrapped up really well and left a lot of doors open, but not in a bad way. And like a yeah. really cool open way, which is nice because sometimes they just, you know, like I loved Ahsoka. And it was a great finale, but also like the door is left wide open on that show. Mm -hmm. That show did not feel like a season yeah. one. That show, like I feel like season one of that show is still going on. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm just waiting yeah. for it to air because like there's there's so much tension and spread apartness. But um, man, no, I'm I'm a uh, I'm super excited to get into the nitty gritty of it. I, I know this show did a lot of things. Um, the one part I wanted to talk about really deeply first is the force and different aspects of the force that we got in this one single episode when Chimere is trying to get the helmet off osha what do y'all think that was do you think he like tapped in to her dark side nature and he saw something and he saw brindock like what was that a lot about is for it embarrassing for me to say that i was quite confused i was too moment? no no okay. i was too Genuine it was moment. it was a really confusing moment to me what i thought was he she was Remember when the witches sort of took over um, the minds of the Jedi and were yes. inside? That's what I was mm -hmm. sensing was that yes. she, he was being taken over by Osha. Yes. Like she was in his mind. He was there because th th his eyes turned black the same way. Um, Torben's. Torben's. Yeah. Uh, Torben's. Yeah. Did. 
I immediately equated it to the scene in The Last Jedi, which obviously a ton of Last Jedi parallels going on throughout oh the God. series. But, you and, know, and when one also a uh, Rise of Skywalker parallel, mm -hmm. I thought. Yes. But like when um, Ray and Luke are training and Luke's like, you went straight to the dark. It's like he put that <laughs> helmet on her and she immediately tapped into that darkness and when he took the helmet off of her she had sith eyes you know like there yeah. was a redness in her eyes so that helmet helped her channel that inherent mm -hmm. ability in her and she was able to immediately tap into him so much so that had he not been able to take it off of her she might have taken taken uh, control of him right there so yeah. i yeah. thought that was really crazy Maybe it's the thing she's been masking the entire time. You know what I mean? Maybe she really is a dark side user, but like well, can never channel it until the contorsus helmet. Well, and you know, she talks about how the reason she failed to be a Jedi is because she had so she couldn't put her uh, quell her anger. She couldn't uh, get rid of that rage mm -hmm. and stuff. And so that yeah, I think that you put the sensory deprivation helmet on and the only thing that's on the surface, you know, like the, is that rage and yeah. that just seeped out, which is very interesting because she doesn't seem like she's quite that rage filled, especially at the end. Um, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's a, it's a really cool, it's, it, there's not a lot of, uh, it's, I don't think we got a, necessarily a happy ending. Uh, no. I don't know. I don't know for, for OSHA on the, on the horizon, but it, it just, you know, it seems, it's very foreboding. Like I, I feel like next season is going to be uh, as friend of the show Alden Diaz said, uh, the joke like the Joker breaking the pu pull cue and uh, handing it to Chimir and uh, uh, Osha, uh, Darth Plagueis. I mean, handing it to them, going, <laughs> "All right, tryout time. Let's see. Uh, let's see who uh, who Woo. gets to be the. I think he's going to end up going for Osha because I think Osha is clearly more powerful than him. Well, and we have to. It, it seemed Sorry. Oh man, we got all oh. excited there. <laughs> it just—it also seems pretty obvious that they're going because it's Disney, it's Star Wars. Like they—they're mm -hmm. going to play mm -hmm. up the romance, and then obviously Sith being the Sith, there there's going to be some either Osha's going to fake affection for him, or there's going to be real affection between the two of them, and one of them's going to have to kill the Osha's going to have to kill mm -hmm. him to like prove her loyalty. Obviously, yeah. like well, and I I wonder too. You know, we can't. Um, downplay the importance of the ascension ceremony and the fact that it wasn't completed and the fact that may went through with it and osha didn't and here we are on the other side of it and osha seems to have all of this darkness in her oh my god that, yes. that may really doesn't maybe seem to have now on the other side of things and so mm -hmm. did the ascension ceremony kind of purify may of that and is that why may ultimately isn't the best choice for Chimir and like, mm -hmm. you know, like was the Ascension ceremony ultimately maybe the purpose of that to join May and Osha back together into one body, you oh know, like, God. I'm, I'm sort of wondering if there's something left to be done there that, because we know nothing, we still know nothing about her clan and, you know, nope. like mm -hmm. they were exiled for doing some crazy dark shit. And so, a season two storyline, like, could that be potentially, you know, Chimere and Osha trying to find out more about um, her origins and like, because clearly Plagueis as a guy that we know a hundred years <laughs> down the line or whatever yeah. is going to be interested in messing around with midichlorians. Mm -hmm. Like they're going to want to figure out this power. Right. So yeah, I don't know. Man, that's heavy. I'm not gonna lie. I, I didn't consider that. Like, if the ascension had gone through, there could have been some sort of, uh, you know, unification of these people. But also, it could be like that's how you solidify yourself in this coven, and not necessarily the dark or the light side. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But but like, doesn't Mother Coral kind of like at the in the first in the episode like where we actually spend time with them she she suggests right like some concern about how they were created so maybe it's just something as simple as uh you know 
they are not necessarily they're obviously not evil witches but mm -hmm. she used she tapped into dark side magic without yeah. like realizing she could control it and yeah. the ascension was supposed to rid them of that like maybe maybe what this is is a sigil on her head yeah. to like mm -hmm. to and that's Protect it keeps the dark from actually entering her Oh, and yeah. you know what? That would make sense, given that Kelnaka had that on his home, mm -hmm. mm. Prot yeah. potentially protecting him from the darkness as well. Yeah, that would because make sense. He got, he he got taken over. He got taken over that one. That yeah. one episode. Yeah. No. Yeah. Look, I, so he got I, obsessed with it. He got obsessed with it. He was. It was. And and look, another thing too with the force, like obviously. You know, we're gonna see some pretty cool stuff with the force, uh, in particular the lightsaber battles. Uh, I mean, uh, some of the best I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like it really felt like watching, you know, Crouching Tiger. Nine. Nine. Like it was like the coolest thing. I, I, I it's funny that you said that because there was like literally there was the shot um of of Chimere when he's flying through the air where a hundred percent is taken from Crouching Tiger, oh, like without question. Mm. Oh, so I, cool. I was was I alone in thinking that I didn't necessarily expect us to get another lightsaber duel. Uh, saying it. not of that well, yeah i that level, i would no. not that not that explosive either i was expecting mm -hmm. like a more um uh and i think that's what kind of put this over the top for me too, yes is i was expecting was a more so intimate uh you know conversation maybe like more intimate uh showdown yeah, yeah. and uh um, but i also think that because I mean, the saber like is such an important plot device for and it is if yeah. i'm not Correct. This is the first time we've ever seen a crystal bleed on screen, right? Like yeah. we had, um, yeah. it, it, it had to be. It had to be very saber focused, I think, for that reason to really drive True. home what we were looking at. Right. We've never seen a. We've never seen a, a character turn face or turn to a bad to a villain so quickly. Anakin's we kind of understood. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Anakin's was very, very manipulated to that point. Whereas within this one episode, Osha goes from episode six. Osha is still kind of on the good side. You know, she's tempted a little bit by Chimere, but by the time episode eight airs like she is fully in this dark side shit and like you know it, it takes you know the death of soul to bring that out in may and like man i'm not gonna lie to y'all that death scene i couldn't the first time i watched it, i couldn't believe what i was watching the second time though and he looked at her i, I started crying it's okay and dies i was like but then also after the it's okay she crushes Harder. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, he gave that, her the permission, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe whatever reservation wanted, she had was gone when he yeah, allowed right. it. That was yet he, a. He, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say he can. That man can like just spit tears out so well. Yes. <laughs> By just the way, literally. there are so many moments where you see tears physically fall from this man's face, and I was absolutely enraptured by it. So Ooh. I just. I that was yet another scene that paralleled to the sequel trilogy, and that felt a lot like the death mm -hmm. of Han Solo mm -hmm. and him basically, you know, Kylo being like, I, I know what I need to do, and I don't know if I have the strength mm -hmm. to do it. And yeah. basically, Han giving him permission, sort of, in that moment and mm -hmm. allowing him to do it. I thought that was another interesting mm -hmm. parallel, especially considering that we've heard Kylo's theme play over. Chimere yeah. before and that mm -hmm. sort of Rin s connection going on with him. So, well, mm. you know, um, we've also like I think one of the main reasons from the very beginning, uh, Star Wars, like the lightsabers, always it's really clean and it's kind of prevented them from using, you know, from ever having a lot of gore, no matter how like deadly a battle was. This is truly the first time I feel like we saw a long drawn out agonizing death oh my god in yeah. star wars like it really played and it, because i i think it, like in in both cases when we saw chimere slaughter all the jedi it was the most brutal thing that we've seen happen on screen and in this case this was like the it was just the most agonizing and such pointed rage and i think in that way this series has done more to accurately display the truth of the dark side and the truth yes. of the darkness than any other series has mm -hmm. like yes mm -hmm. okay let's be real and i know joe and i talked about this a lot a few weeks ago the dark side can be sexy it is fun to talk about how sexy it can be but no one is really looking at it and and this is something that i see in in shipping communities not just Raylos, but like you've got a problem there where like when you romanticize the dark side you gotta really take a second and think about it. it really is still the dark side like it is still like 
this 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 area of evil, you know? And like I really enjoy that the High Republic books have taken into effect like, you know, sex, you know, the Jedi obviously can do those kind of things in the High Republic. It's no longer like a moral code, you know? I, I was afraid for a while that the Jedi being this like abstinent thing reflects like, oh no, sex is bad in the 70s. You know I mean? like, yeah. you know, there's like that, there's like this weird undertone of that, even in the 90s. But like, like obviously, if Anakin wanted to fall in love with Padme, they wouldn't have had a kid. And like, that's the idea of compassion and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm essentially getting at is, these people are still dark characters, you know what I mean? And they are still tempting and pushing each other to places that they don't need to go and they shouldn't go. That's why, you know, a character like May doesn't go to the dark side. She realizes what she realizes in that fifth episode or fourth episode, this is not for me. And then what's even more manipulative that I, that I really want, I haven't seen people talk about it. Even whenever May was talking to soul, Kymir was still trying to pull that shit. It was like it was like it was like a literally it's like a crush. It was like a side piece, kind of like, oh yeah, that's the dark, you know, like like she'll trying to like flirt her into the dark side. Yes. She's still trying to be her master. And I'm like, that that is where the dark side is bad. Like genuinely. That is because you've got you've got Osha who's already fully in that shit, like convinced people to go kill Soul. May is not nowhere near it right now. She was at one point, but like even still, Kymir is trying to seduce her. I hate it. It's so icky, you know? And yes, it's sexy, and yes, people can have their opinions on it. I agree. But it still doesn't make it a good thing. Like, these are still bad guys. The mm -hmm. show is now about bad guys. The end of it's all about bad guys. You know what I mean? Ooh. And, how and I mean, that's what it ultimately guys. was from yeah. the beginning. We knew from the beginning this is about the Sith. This is what the Sith are up to yes. right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that was a very Sith thing. By the way, you're talking about Kymir standing off to the side. With, was it with May? Right or something. Day, yeah. yeah, he's like, yeah, that's right. You use your anger. So it was very oh, like Palpatine on the side of oh, sidelines yeah. in Return of the Jedi. So oh, man. yeah, it's it's all. It was honestly a lot like Revenge of the Sith, where you've got you know Anakin, Count Dooku, and and uh, Palpatine all in one room, and like, you know, Obi Wan's passed out in the corner, but like you've got this idea of like, you know, the look, you know, uh, strike him down, and then you know that that look that. Count Dooku makes a you know Palpatine knowing he Dan realizes well. in that moment, yeah. Yep, it's a yeah. man. I'm telling you, and that's the dark uh, side. Oh yeah. No, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking about if we do get into second season. There's so many pla places they can go, and I I know we're talking about the dark side can be sexy, but it's ultimately bad. But like maybe yeah. the sexy part of the dark side is what saves Osha and Kaimi, or maybe they fall in love and that passion and that. That's true. That would be a side of love. I was thinking that too. I was thinking that them. too. Maybe they can't kill each other when Plagueis wants them to. Yeah. And then he kills them both. And then he's like, hey, this little cutie from Naboo, maybe he wants to be my uh, uh, little, yeah. oh, little yeah. sheave. <laughs> little yeah. sheavy pal. Twink, twink sheave. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> point. Though. I hadn't considered that. That their that's compassion, awesome. just like you know, Padme and Anakin, because that's lead the, I them mean, together. It's, oh wow! You know, it it could be the thing that brings them back to the light side. They're they're caring for one another instead of. It would be, yeah. wouldn't it be nice if you know, it like completely breaking from tradition, a character could show compassion and not die immediately. That would be. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, that's kind of what happened with Ray and um and Kylo was yeah. their love for each other or their like. Mm -hmm. Bond. Feelings of respect and passion for one another ultimately mm -hmm. helped them, you know, helped Kylo at least. Yeah, he cared about. Well, one thing too, I think we need to bring up just because it's, it was speculative, and now I think it's been confirmed. I do not believe that Osha and May are a dyad per se. No. Um, okay. Well, what do you think, Adam? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Adam's got well, something. Well, it's just really interesting because. Um, this is part of a larger discussion I was going to talk about with the sequel trilogy, but I think it's enough to kind of pull it, pull it off on its own. So um, all we know from um, the rise of Skywalker in terms of the dyad and in, in terms of actual quotes uh, in, in the dialogue, um, Kylo Ren says what Palpatine doesn't know is we're a dyad in the force, Ray, two that are one. Mm -hmm. And then Palpatine later says, uh, the life force of your bond, a dyad in the force, a power uh, like life itself, unseen for generations, and now the power of two restores the one. So again, we have this idea, two that are one, 
um, <laughs> the power of two, right? Yeah, yeah. Which we hear from the witches. Now, The Secrets of the Sith. I don't Great know if you book. have this book. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, yeah. Check it out. Uh, I'm gonna now read from this book. Don't don't <laughs> well, support look, Wikipedia. I feel like I'm at church. I'll say I'll say this too. Yeah, let's not quote. I put, this, I put this text in my midi chlorians video essay. Yes, you did. And yes. Yeah, so it's it's actually really good details right here. So, I like right, this. everyone qu quiet down for scripture reading. Okay, <laughs> here we go. This book has a bunch of interesting stuff about the dyad, uh, but uh, there's a section here that says two that are one, and it says, uh, For a millennium the Sith have adhered to the rule of two, but this decree is said to merely be a pale imitation of its predecessor, the doctrine of the dyad. So already we're talking about the dyad is um, really connected to the Sith side of things. It's not something that really maybe the Jedi care about or know about per se. And the interesting thing about that is it really seemed like uh, – soul was struggling to find the words to describe what uh the sisters are right mm -hmm. like he was talking to may and he's like you guys aren't even sisters you're and then he got shocked or whatever but um it continues to say legends claim that two be beings sharing this profound connection gain access to a great number of abilities yada 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 um if two sith were bonded so deeply as to transcend their physical beings the power they could unlock together would know no limits. The dyad, go ahead. No, no, you keep going. You keep going. Okay. The dyad is an elusive connection, one that cannot be created through will alone. Keep in mind, this book is written uh, through the point of view of Sidious. It's kind of like a diary journal kind of thing. So this next part says, my master, Darth Plagueis, attempted to forge such a bond with me. Though he was wise in the ways of the Force, he proved unworthy of the task. I, too, attempted to facilitate such a connection with my apprentice, Anakin Skywalker. Yet even with the so-called Chosen One at my side, the balance we showed paled against the perfection of the Dyad. If the two most powerful bloodlines in the history of the galaxy, Pal uh, Palpatine and Skywalker, could not produce such a bond, the question remains if a Dyad is possible at all. Uh, another section here, the final section says, Forging the Future. The doctrine of the dyad was etched into the walls of my citadel on Exegol eons ago, a constant reminder of its significance to, the, to our order. To my Sith Eternal, the dyad is not merely the stuff of ancient legend. It is the future of the Sith, the key to unlocking the full potential of the dark side. But if a new dyad is to be formed, with whom shall I share its legendary power? It is doubtful young Kylo Ren will ever prove himself a more worthy apprentice than his grandfather, Lord Vader. Per perhaps then my, lo my lost granddaughter will accept her birthright and rule the galaxy by my side. My visions have not yet made that clear. Only one thing is certain. When a dyad returns once more, it shall usher in the dawn of a new era, and I will be there to claim its power in the name of the Sith. There you go. So, I think that actually does a better job of explaining the plot of uh, Rise of Skywalker than maybe the movie does. But <laughs> yeah, the, honestly, any anything that talks about the plot of Rise of Skywalker, I'm like, yeah, I fuck with that. It's yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway. anyway. Um, but, so uh, listen, we got uh, Woodsy here saying, "I bet Sheev had one of those diaries with the voice password from the 2000s." <laughs> yeah. um, so what's really interesting to Matt to me is that the way that we seem to be talking about the twins in the acolyte is almost the reverse um mm -hmm. we seem to be talking about one as two not two as one right yeah but so is that different or is that the same you know do i, I yeah, don't know yeah. if we have if did, we have enough information to know that but did soul say that you're the same person but you two right yeah, or am i yes yes, yes. So, so are they the, go ahead sorry I was just going to uh, recite their little rhyme, which is, you're with me, I'm with you, always one, but born as two. Born as two. So born as two seems to fit the same definition as what I just read with the dyad, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as above sits the stars and below lies the sea, I give you you and you give me me. So mm -hmm. I don't really know. I mean, are we seeing... You know what 
is going to be perceived as a dyad because mm. I, you know, I mean, to me, I sort of fold this into, you could very easily read Palpatine's line now in rise of Skywalker unseen for generations. Yeah. As, and that's them. Is he referencing this? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, or could he be referencing Chimere and Osha? Because Chimere mm -hmm. has said, I want, I'm looking for the power of two. Mm -hmm. And we know that we saw the scene with him healing Osha. Mm -hmm. We've seen Ray and Ben healing each other. Mm -hmm. So are we now saying that Chimere and Osha are the dyad? Yeah. Wait, but just yes. to cotton pick in a second, I just had a thought. You know, I, I said in the very, like, the first episode, obviously, that poem is a play on As Above, So Below, which is, like, you know, yeah. um, in metaphysical circles, it is absolutely a reflection of how, like, your inner world becomes your outer world, etc. ad nauseum. But now I'm just thinking, now it just occurred to me, what, what if, what if the magic um, that Mother Anise was trying to do was that she she made a force she made one force child but that force mm -hmm. child had an enormous amount of darkness in her and mm -hmm. she tried to remove the darkness mm -hmm. and one of the like in doing so made another child that contained all of it mm -hmm. yeah it's you know? yeah it's totally possible i mean yeah we, i just don't think we know enough yet um to say what's really going on there and i you know i think part of that's purposeful i mean i think yeah you you leave stuff like that blank so you can explore it later. So yeah. hopefully we, but if what you're saying is correct, you know what else I could see totally happening. That's such a, like they could plant that seed. If in fact, in, if in fact they are a dyad, but some part of what I'm saying is also true, then you could easily, easily maybe later say like the same about Ray and Kylo. Sure. Like somehow some way one of them held all the darkness and one of them didn't. But exactly. no one is ever not redeemable. Well, look, yeah. too, another thing we have to really reflect on for a second, because this now, in a, in a way, of course, rewrites canon, or it couldn't. We, we don't know. I mean, we know that more than likely they're on, um, where's the Cortosis Mines at? What planet is it again? It's on uh, Genosis, right? It's on Genosis. Bald, no, no, it's not. Bald, no, it's from Bald where, it's from where Duke is from. Bald Dimmick. Bald Dimmick. Oh. Sorry, I was yes. close. But wait a minute. I thought in the um in Thrawn in Thrawn alliances or don't they talk about how like Dooku's planet was hoarding all the Cortosis? I don't remember that part. I, I can tell you this much. In Legends, that's where Plagueis and Tenebris were whenever they were they were mining they were mining Cortosis. And like obviously Octo is an un or Octo and Octo, that unknown planet that looks like Octo could not be Toe. Uh, yeah. no, no, it could be, uh, it could be, or or Oc 3, as I called it the other night. Which is <laughs> dumb, 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 dumb. So. No, but but what I'm getting at is, and and what we have to think about too is this could still align with what happens in the Plagueis novel, which would be kind of cool, or this could completely re rewrite it in a great way. And I know, uh, I saw on Twitter someone's like a whole coven of lesbian space witches really you know that, that that's where Plagueis steals his ideas from and then someone yes. under it was like, like Why not? this sounds like the most EU shit ever like yeah. don't, don't yeah. act like this it is honestly does. Does. the only what? difference is that in the EU the witches would have their titties out that's like that's <laughs> literally it yes they would be on that's true and man. yeah they would just spend a little too much time describing like the shape of the, the breast, which would be yeah. like really yeah. I'll be wearing like, like, like come on man yeah like I came here for Star Wars suits. Yeah. And they would yes. all be Trelix and have double sided lightsabers for some. Yes. Oh, that would be fine. Wait, also, could, now that I'm thinking of something, I don't mean to, to like backpedal, no. but could somebody no, no, in the no. chat tell me if I'm crazy? Because I am 100% sure so that wrong. in one of those Thrawn books, it has something about that Sereno gets all of their money because they have a shit ton of Cortosis. Let's see. Thrawn Elias. Thrawn I, Elias is Let me see. I am. Um, I, I. You said that that's from the, the Dooku Je Jedi Lost book, right? Maybe. It's from something. I um, remember. There is something. There is something. I know that you're thinking. Now, I always get Jedi lost uh, mixed up. Okay, hold with, on. Uh, it does. It is a. Mind. It is a. It is owned by Dooku. It is his mind. Oh. But it's on Mokavij. Uh, okay, M O K I V J. Okay. Look at Mokavij. look at Eli in the chat here, man. Duke show. Look, he's got all of the the necessary info. Damn, he's there so loyal. Look, look, um, Wikipedia obviously, who, man. 
there's some there's <laughs> some things that we need to also dissect, not just about, you know, uh, the difficult relationships that we saw on screen or even like what the dyad really means in a show like this. But like if you really take a step back and you look at this show, I know it was pitched as Kill Bill meets Frozen. And like it's <laughs> accurate. It's like really reflecting on the whole show. It is super accurate to the show. Yeah. Two great movies and series, but like, damn, like, you know, sisters, you know, one having all this power, not knowing to do with it. The other one is, you know, kind of powerless. And like, if you look at it, you see May training and you see May being the one that's like using the force. But like, let's be real. You got to have the look at the rebellion aspect of it all, too. Like OSHA was kind of trying to get away from all that, you know, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. It's it's kind of like when a kid acts out, there's always something deeper there. And the fact that OSHA goes to the dark side to me is something very compelling. I don't know. Like you can kind of see mm -hmm. like. The one that was always more, you know, aligned with the with the order that she wanted to belong to was May. Inevitably, May would lie for her order, just like the Jedi would lie for their order. You know, Bernice Chiro is. I mean, that was that was a very childlike thing to do. Uh, yeah. I guess we could talk about Vern real quick, man. Oh my god. Um, what? I have lots of thoughts. Do the it more. The do more it. that I love, and listen. And uh, Adam said it earlier, talking about how this. Hopefully, people will start to explore. Uh, other eras is like this will be a jumping off point yeah go read the high republic there's so many people and it, like scott was, i love scotty and i won't include him the first in this, book but, but the first book. you will you will love these books it's because now people are going to see vernestra Rowe and her connection to chimer her like one of the first jedi in a while that we know of in a while that has a uh a, a padawan who falls to the dark side before anakin before oh, any yeah. of this kind of goes down and that is a huge thing and you've got all this history on this person now mm -hmm. but the more i think about it the more i love it um i love that moment where she walks out of the ship and he's got the helmet off and she goes you you're still alive and he goes oh shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah. his magneto helmet god damn i loved it it was yeah. so star wars um oh. Probably my my top thing from the episode, honestly, just that all it. that kind of stuff with Vernestra. I thought I just thought I'm, okay, there was a lot of stuff that was really cool, but um, that that shit is this is some of the the I I don't know it, that was one of the theories that people put out there uh, about Vernestra because people were saying well the marks kind of look a little whatever and I'm like well you can do a curve with a lightsaber it's fine yeah, yeah um yeah. but I I want to know everything I possibly can and I'm hoping that like maybe season two. <laughs> uh, our flashbacks are back to what happened between Chimere and Vernestra. That would be really cool, yeah. I think. So, yeah, for sure. sure. More Vern, more Vern. I love Vern, yeah. and don't call her Vern in real well, life. Well, I mean, she, she, uh, kick you your know, ass. she's 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 Leslie's wife, so there's no chance that that's not going to happen. <laughs> exactly. So, well, yeah, she's no, she's gonna be. Yeah, she's gonna be there for sure. Uh, Vern is gonna be in the next season, but uh, yeah, look, yeah. Anyway, don't I, call her Vern. Don't call her I'm Vern. very happy none of the theories came to fruition because I saw some pretty awful takes. On like Vern is the Sith Lord, ha ha ha. She's Darth Plagueis. Like I had some brain rot bullshit. Sounds like but, someone uh, who can't yeah, read. Yeah, honestly, uh, that was the <laughs> that was the most garbage fucking nonsense I ever heard in my life. All that being said, though, um, it's so much more admirable. Not really. I'm sorry. I take that back. How it was handled was not admirable, but like seeing all the context of it laid out, it is the only way you can have a sufficient alibi against right. all of it no excuses at that point they saw master soul dead she could have easily have written it off as you know it was a it was a murder suicide and he went crazy and he he killed himself you know what i mean like it like there's so many ways you can write this and do this and i am blown away that they did it with that the way, well, the way i also think it. that a good reason to do that is that like that could make next season focus on on um you know on like the battle between Vern having to like number one live with this lie and convince other people of this lie and then actually really get into the meat of meat and potatoes like the, the blanks that she can't fill in of what happened you know um and I think that that can that can make for an incredibly interesting story played out yes. against 
Um, I suspect, I have a suspicion that next season will be markedly less violent and more story. Not that this was tremendously violent, but I think mm -hmm. um, it'll be more political and more. Oh my God, yeah. yes, please. I was thinking the exact sad. same thing. Like next season's going to be kind of a political drama. Oh. Whereas this season we kind of set that up because we're which gonna, means I, Chris Swift might actually like it. <laughs> <laughs> Look though, like what are you gonna say, Adam? I was just gonna say, yeah, I see the, you know, um, the the Jedi storyline in season two kind of being this Senator uh, Ray in court that they introduced, oh. who I thought was awesome. Yeah, yes, um, yeah. Him talk. He's been talking about leading this external review of the Jedi. That will obviously play a huge part in season two of him investigating the Jedi. While Vernestra probably goes off on this sort of secret mission with May to perhaps find Chimere and Osha and get to the bottom of this mystery. And if I was to speculate further on that, I would suspect that maybe she puts her nose where it doesn't belong, mm -hmm. uncovers some stuff, maybe finds Plagueis, God tries God. to plies, tries to report oh back, God. maybe utters the word Sith into the intercom into her intercom and then gets mm -hmm. cut down. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Yoda has that information and doesn't know what to do with it. You know, mm -hmm. but like that's kind of what I want to talk about. Scotty with the clip. I was gonna get. I'm gonna get the clip pulled up. So Adam but, texted us earlier. Oh, I'll give. I'll let you preface it. I'll let you. Yeah, let me it. set it up. So one thing I I want to set up is uh, I'm I'm older. I'm almost forty, and uh, one thing that happened for fans of the original trilogy when the prequel trilogy came out um, is they had to come to grips with a lot of new information, <laughs> and. Um, fans that were set in their ways. Um, I mean, I was like, a, you know, I was 13 when uh, Phantom Menace came out, but imagine an older fan, let's say a fan that was, uh, you know, like 25 or 30 when Phantom mm -hmm. Menace came out, right? They were immediately hit in the face with a lot of new information that they could either accept or they did not accept, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, uh, they either grew with the franchise and continued to be a fan or they decided they did not like Star Wars anymore, right? And so a good example of, of a piece of information that might do that is like Anakin built C-3PO, right? Yeah. You either have to get on board with that information and kind of accept it <laughs> or you uh, throw a tantrum and write a 25,000 word blog about it and say George <laughs> Lucas ruined your childhood. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so what's interesting now is, um, you know, 25 years out from Phantom Menace, the prequel generation is starting to come to terms with that a little themselves. Right. Like we're, we're getting a show here that is recontextualizing stuff about the prequels and for a lot of people, it's changing stuff that maybe they will or won't like. Mm -hmm. And right now, I don't think it's anything super serious. But a good example of this of really dumb stuff is like Kiati Monday's birthday, right? Like, <laughs> it means nothing. It means nothing. Nothing. Okay? Nothing. Or, or like Plagueis' birthday or whatever. Like Star Wars Theory was like, oh, he should be 15. He should be 15. Like, Who gives a shit? No one cares. No one cares. <laughs> No one cares how old Plagueis is or why what he's doing. If he's fifteen in that cave, I don't care what he's doing in the cave. Okay. And he uh, looked he looked fifteen. Like he looked uh, tight. Yeah. He was tight. If I was a fifteen year old, would be creeping on like that. Those yes. like twenty. Oh, he's yeah. watching. Yeah. Oh, he's it's like porkies. It's like porkies in there. Don't, yeah. don't go in Plagueis' <laughs> cave. Don't go in Plagueis' cave. No, Plagueis. Just oh, okay, everybody. Never mind. I get okay, it. I get it. I'm anyway, just, so. So we're, we're at this point, you know, and that's where a lot of people are pretending to be outraged or what have you. But what's happening that's very interesting, and um, there's areas where the prequel trilogy can be recontextualized. And I think that's what Leslie, Headland, and Filoni and, and, and filmmakers in this new Lucasfilm are going to be looking to do. I mean, obviously, Kenobi did that to a degree, right? They... They went, into a, they went into a gap 
and they put some stuff there and you either liked it and agreed with it or you didn't. And okay, mm -hmm. let's yeah. move on. Okay. So the, it, the final scene of this season with Vernestra and Yoda. Okay. Uh -huh. To me, it's a little scene that sets up season two, but this scene to me completely recontextualizes a major scene from the Phantom Menace. And it also completely answers a question to Kiati Mundi's appearance appearance earlier in the season. So Scotty just hit play and um, just, I'll, I'll tell take, you when to stop take, it. Yeah. Just take it for what it's worth. Watch this scene. Think about and, what we just watched and watch and, the way Yoda and Mace look at each other and what they say and yada, yada. Here we go. He was trained in the Jedi art. My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennia. I do not believe the Sith could have returned without us knowing. Ah, hard to see the dark side is. We will use all our resources all right. to unravel this mystery. All we will do. Yeah. <laughs> Already? Yeah, there we go. I want to watch the whole movie now. So <laughs> I I was I'm locked in, man. Yeah, I know me too. I was like, oh, I'm ready. <laughs> so Mundi Mundi Very doesn't know a sh doesn't know a thing, right? right? None of the council does. But Yoda and Mace maybe definitely know something's up. Yeah. And I think you can read into that a lot. I think Vernestra goes to Yoda and tells Yoda something is up. And I think you can sort of read here. I mean, Mace is basically what vice president of the council. How does this yes. work? <laughs> He's yeah. like number two, right? Yeah. I think <laughs> you can sort of read here that Yoda confides in Mace that, Hey, look, something's out there. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but by the time you get to the end of this movie at the funeral, Mace tells Yoda, there's no question that their attacker was part of the Sith. And Yoda's like, okay, well, you know, always two there are, you know, and then we get the, which one did we kill? The, the master of the apprentice. So mm -hmm. at the end of this movie, they are both locked in on the Sith and the rule of two. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think that that's super interesting and that completely recontextualizes that scene for me. And also Mace, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this as someone who, like I said, I was 13 when the prequels came out. I went through a roller coaster ride with the prequels. I, yeah. I liked them as at first, then as I got older, I did not like them. Then I became an apologist, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. And now I've just accepted them and I love them, you know, um, for what they are. And I, um, but I, I have always sort of had that weird relationship with them. But one thing that's remained steady till this very moment is I've never liked Mace Windu as a character. And yeah. the reason I've never liked Mace Windu is I've always felt that I, I love Samuel L. Jackson as an actor. Um, but as a character, I've always felt that Mace Windu was just unnecessarily harsh on Anakin yes. as a child in yep. this scene, right? And I've always felt that, you know, if Mace would have shown maybe just a touch of compassion to Anakin in this moment, maybe he wouldn't have became Darth Vader, right. <laughs> you know? And so I've always had a problem with Mace. Um, and I also, uh, you know, just as like uh, to put on a film critic hat, and sort of just analyze the prequels in terms of like, you know, the dialogue and the acting. It's not Samuel L. Jackson's finest performance. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a little, it's a little stilted and, but that's another story, but just to talk about Mace as a character. But if, if you can follow my line of thinking that Mace is perhaps in on this, that he knows something of this story of the acolyte. Mace is acting this way because he knows what happened to master soul. Yep. And Mace knows about virgences and Mace knows what happens when a child is created by the force. Yep. And he's scared shitless of Anakin. Oh, of course. And he wants nothing to do with this kid 
or an ancient prophecy or anything. So when you watch this scene now through the lens of knowing what happened to the acolyte and what mm -hmm. happened to soul, it just completely changes um, the character of Mace Windu to me. And um, it gives his actions throughout the prequels, especially in Revenge of the Sith now, so much more weight to me, mm. especially him going one-on-one -on -one with um, Palpatine with Anakin standing right there between them. It's just, it's just something kind of crazy to think about. Well, look, there's another part in this scene, too, that I wanted to dissect. As yeah. much as I love the beginning of it, obviously, and I know Alex from Star Wars explaining, really talked about it really well. Kiati Mundi's a line right here. Impossible. This have been extinct from Millennium. Okay, that's the point of this character, that he is unaware. The whole yes. point of it is that, <laughs> that he, is, he is kind of a clueless dumbass. Mm -hmm. And when people use yeah. it as fact... <laughs> The, the man ordered a, a, a snow cone with the, the ice flavored ice. snow cone. Yes, yes. ice. With, it, no, he's yeah, he says the ice is a flavor. So that's you all you need I'm, to know. I'm about just Yachty thinking Mundi. that makes me really sad. Everything that Adam said would be like the best, most intricate way to handle it. And yes. it would be really it would be really fascinating to see that play out on screen and see it woven in that way. And what they will probably do, I'm just realizing now. Uh, since they dropped the fact that Chimere can do a memory wipe, they will probably yep. just make it so that nobody remembers that this happened. Oh, see, <laughs> if they did it that way, that'd be weak. I but like, there's a, there's a moment after after this as well that I wanted to kind of talk about as well because Adam Adam brought some amazing points in. There's another part that can be dissect, dissected from this too. Sith have been extinct <laughs> for a millennium. I do not believe the Sith could have returned without us knowing. Ah, hard to see the dark side is. <laughs> we will use all our resources to unravel this mystery. We will discover the identity of your attacker. May the force be with you. This next part is my favorite part. Master Qui-Gon, more to say of you? With your permission, my master, I have encountered divergence in the force. Okay. <laughs> that to me, that's the shit right there. Because yeah. at that moment, for me personally, I'm gonna move my camera real quick. Hold on, Jeremy. I'm gonna put you down there. Hold on. Oh, wait, I put no, I gotta Go put I gotta, I gotta I gotta leave Joe on top. Hold on. Put Joe down there. No, put, me down there. put me in the no, Joe's so, on top always. For me personally, for that's the line that makes ears that uh, makes Mason's yes. ears perk up. That's the yeah. line he's like, Oh, we heard this shit before. Exactly. It's not happening again. Yes. Like this is not gonna happen because what happened then. We what gotta get mean? this guy out of here. Uh -huh. I, mean, I want to hear this. Uh -huh. Yes, and then wait, it gets better. A virgins, you say? Everyone looks at Yoda because yeah. Yoda is probably the only one that's ever really dealt with a virgins before. Yeah, or whatever that means. Located and around Yoda just person. Yoda just swallowed yeah, his that, gun. Oh, that's he's, the he's, line. Mace like, does not like this. Yeah. He's no, gagged. No. He's gagged right now. <laughs> gagged and gooped. A person gagged and gooped. That, that's already happened. We know yeah. that's not bomb bad. A boy. No. A boy. A boy. A gender by this point. The cells of the highest concentration of midi chlorians I have seen in a life form. Now this is where I want to just blow my load. But like this is true. <laughs> this is evident. They got the record of it all. You want to shoot your M count? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I do. But most importantly, though. Obviously, the, the 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 entire Star Wars, they finally said it in Bad Batch, but like they've been dancing the word, dancing around the word. But like, what's plague is his whole point? He's looking to see how he can manipulate many chlorians. If Mother Anasea can find some way to make that one child two, then that is a form of it. And everyone's always they're like, this ruins Anakin's arc. I saw that this past you know season. Not the case at all. Anakin was born of the Force, obviously. She, Mother Anasea, being a person manipulated the Force to make life, whereas Anakin was quite literally born of it. It is possible he was conceived by the Midichlorians. It was possible. Okay, no confirmation. That look. You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the Force. Oh, my God. You believe it's this boy? I don't presume to. But you do. <laughs> oh, man. Called him out. Revealed your opinion is. I request the boy be tested, Master. Oh, trained as a Jedi, you request for him. Hmm? Finding him was the will of the Force. 
Now that's where I think is very interesting. That's the Qui Gon perspective. That's the rogue kind of Jedi, like, and it's true. Finding him was the will of the Force. That that mm-hmm. I get it, but like, was it the will of Qui Gon? Because that's a huge thing we got to look at, right? It's giving soul, soul, very, very out of soul. compassion, mm-hmm. out of compassion, took that girl from her environment when she wanted to leave, just like Anakin. But the the difference the difference between Anakin and Osha was that Anakin already had ties with his mother mm-hmm. and the mother was okay. It's 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 very beautiful paralleling if you actually look at it. Whereas, you know, boy and mom relationships, very Sigmund Freud weird. You can get weird with that. But you can also get weird with mother daughter relationships. We're <laughs> like, you know, oh, yeah. like it, that's heavy shit too. Let's not like, get Sigmund Freud with it, please. No. No. <laughs> but like finding the will like finding him was the will of the force. Was it though? I have no doubt of that. Well, well, he has no doubt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was there. Uh, fantastic timing, by the way. Fantastic. Scott, you got to get what? You got to get one of those apps that puts little shimmers when you use clips, so that you don't get yeeted. Because this is like we're showing so much. I don't think, I'm starting to get nervous. <laughs> I don't think anything's happening yet. We'll see if the chat. Right. This is uh, this is this is our constant state of being on this show. So. Look, this is the look that I thought was so important. <laughs> Bring him before us, then. Holy man. Wait, there's another one after this. This is the one I'm like. I, this oh, is the one I thought man. of. This is the one I thought of. Side eye. Yeah. That's the well, one I thought of when we were talking about this clip earlier. Then they've um, got, of course, the talk of Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon and the thing, and then the test. Let's look at the test. Well, and, you know, of course, there's the other parallel, right? Because we got the test scene in right. Yep. as well. There's so many parallels between yeah. Man, the is the best. I'm just I, starting to get very nervous about a copyright strike. This don't, so don't. It'll be okay. We'll be okay. We get one every other Thursday. It's fun. Okay. They love it. <laughs> you want me to sing over this? Yes. <laughs> a cup. A cup. A ship. A ship. A tuka cat. <laughs> a, a mountain. Hmm. A mountain. Ooh, I'll feel with the snow, sweet potato oh, pie, or shut my mouth. <laughs> Afraid, are you? No, sir. Go, See don't through you. Mean. We can. Be mindful of your feelings. Your thoughts dwell on your mother. Just like Osha and May. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. May more so than Osha, but she also had dreams. You know what I mean? I miss. How do we? How do we know Shmi wasn't low key a witch? Let's bring oh it up. We were all to imagine. Yeah. Oh, oh my God! God. That was the break. Just saying. Joseph, please. Joseph, she joking. Mm-hmm. I do declare. What has that got to do with anything? Oh God! Everything. everything. What? Let's hear it. Um, I was just gonna say that another thing that I thought was interesting was um. Senator Rayencourt's quote about um, you protect an image of goodness and restraint, but it's only a matter of time before one of you snaps. snaps. And when, not if that happens, who will be strong enough to stop him? Um, And how that mirrored a quote, or I don't remember the episode, but earlier in the series, Mother Anasea says, someday those noble intentions you all have will destroy every Jedi in the galaxy. Yes. God some some fantastic writing on this show. Um, yeah. I, I know I that's been one my, of the criticisms, but I think the writing has been very on point. So. I thought it's been great. But my it's thought, amazing. though, also immediately when he said that was, like, what's a review going to do then if that's <laughs> what you think? Like, mm-hmm. you can't, there's nothing the Senate can do about omnipotent beings. So what, 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 you know, like. Maybe he's hoping um, to give him less political church and state, power. Man. Uh, separation of church and state. That's all yeah. he's trying to say. I think, right? that's, I think that's the main part, yeah. He doesn't want them to be the police, basically, I guess. Right. Yeah. But, it, but it they shouldn't happen. be, to be fair, right? They, like That's like a whole thing with the... I, yeah. I feel like one of the feelings of the Jedi. It just doesn't happen, which is so great. What kind of salary do you think the Jedi are pulling down? They got four one phase salary. <laughs> are they tax exempt? Do we know? Or the, is yeah, the they probably are. 
Scotty, I think you misunderstood what I said before. We have to get you oh. one of those apps that puts little waves when you're using copyright material, so you like you can't be picked up. Because I'm getting very oh. nervous. Don't be worried. I I'm worried. <laughs> Path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Oh my anger god! Leads the best. Hate. hate leads to suffering. Because, like, look. Let's really take a second and look at what happens to Osha. Okay, she is dead set <laughs> and scared about what is going on in her life. And the second the Jedi come back mm. in, she's worried about it. She's worried about bringing up those untapped feelings again. Fear. Fear leads to anger. Obviously, she starts to realize what is going on. Anger leads to hate. Then we haven't seen it yet, but this is going to be the whole next mm -hmm. season. Hate leads to suffering. Whole next season is going to be this line. You know, I love that the Phantom Menace is such a big inspiration for this series. I sense much fear in you. Great freaking scene. He's God. So, so good. Another good one, of course, is the funeral pyre, which I mean, we don't have to really watch it, but I just love the... Uh, we get one in this show, too. You know what I mean? Like, we mm -hmm. get a funeral pyre. Uh, we get an actual... We actually get a Viking funeral pyre, which they put them out in a raft and send them, you know, mm -hmm. all the way out there. But, ah, my God. Can I just point something out that I just noticed? You talked about uh, like your concerns with shipping circles, meaning like yes. romantic shipping circles. And yes. YouTube's giving you ads for Harbor Freight. And I wonder yeah. if the algorithm picked up something. Like, it might, look, yeah, look, shipping. look at this. It's yeah. like chat, yeah. buddy. I'm, I'm going to talk to this. Ship you this some hammers in four days. Yeah. Oh, and it's going to give us uh, the, the some Trump sticker mule uh, stuff as well. Look at that. Yeah. Now, this could get us flack as the music. But yeah, I'll just put the captions on. Oh, there's no captions. Great. But like this yeah. scene alone, you know what I mean? This is where the Jedi really start to fall. You know, yeah. We see, like, this, this is it. You know, the, the, this the one actual know. Sith is right there and no right. one is picking up on it. You know what I mean? I mean, that's the whole part point of Sith, too. They want to mask their feelings, mask who they are. And Chimer does it really well. Yeah, so does Jar Jar. Man, Jar Jar is one of the best He's standing actors. right there. <laughs> yeah. No, I guess to round up this whole discussion, I don't know if there's any other big, heavy moments you want to discuss, but I want to. I do think we should actually talk about this moment. Hold on. I think I think we got to talk about uh, Darth Plagueis and the yes. Acolytes. Oh my God, y'all! There are very few moments where I like. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> there are very few moments. Oh there are no. very few moments that have sent me in a Star Wars show. Luke showing up at the end. You know what I mean? Like, I, honestly, yes, I don't think you're awesome. going to find any really good stuff about the acolyte up at the top on YouTube. Yeah, unfortunately, probably not. Probably not. This is actually probably the best thing we could find. But no. All that being said, uh, I was watching this again with a seven-year-old. Uh, I was watching this with my thirty-three-year-old uh, cousin. I was watching this with uh, my uncle, who's like in his fifties, and I was watching this with my other uncle, who's also in his fifties, and. Exactly what I said when that hand came around that corner, I yelled, and I'm gonna cover my mouth so I don't have my kids screen recording this. I said, "That's motherfucking Darth Plagueis," as loud as I could in front of that little child, and like I couldn't help it. My brain literally just went, <laughs> "Like you are seeing your favorite book play out right here before your very own eyes." Yeah. I lost my mind. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I knew I, by that hand. I, I shrieked. I, oh. I knew it was coming too, and I just. I oh, just, yeah. And foolishly, foolishly and naively, I thought, I'm going to log on to Twitter when this episode is over <laughs> and all of the fanboys will be, they will be placated. They will yes. be quashed. They'll be so, yeah, like, the, the, all the anger will be gone. No. Yeah. Their no, anger isn't you know. based in reality or no. in anything. No. So it's, right. they'll be mad no matter they're what. They're mad that she said, they mad she said, go to hell, Jedi, or whatever. See you in Even though Jedi, they've said right. hell exactly. thousands of times yeah. in Star Wars. Exactly, Han Solo's line in in Empire Strikes Back mm -hmm. is "I'll see you in hell." That's exactly the same line. So it's it's we had there's precedent, but but aside from all that, you know, it, I I too uh, also like I said woke up my sleeping uh, family who were trying you know again trying to rest before uh, <laughs> driving for a full day on the interstate. Um, I I screamed. I screamed so loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Me too. I was, I, so I, I was so excited. I was so excited. 
I love Ooh, when Star Wars is creepy and scary, and I like that they didn't make him like um, regal and sort of like this uh, yes. Palpatine sort of figure. I like that he was creepy. I like that he was scary. I like that he was coming out from the shadows and looking from behind a rock with his long, like disgusting that. little fingers and probably like a his nails. I was oh, yeah. into that. I love it. And I, I, I this they've been doing this this whole season with um, those. Uh, like references to horror movies and yeah. that like that real terror and like the unsettling music and un unsettling scenes. And um, yeah, no, I love that they're going with that and I hope they keep going with it. And I hope that they don't make him uh, too um, human. And next season, no, I, hope I agree. They keep him creepy and terrifying. Oh, same yeah. dude. Uh, Adam, what about you? Did you, did you lose your shit? So, yeah. So, you know, I had heard some rumors. Okay, so David Harewood, who ended up playing Senator um, Rancourt, right? Yeah. There was some speculation before um, the show even started, I think, that he had been cast. And I believe previously he had played um, maybe Martian Manhunter in a DC show or okay. something. And yeah. So he had, had some history playing some CG characters. And Martian Manhunter even has like an elongated head, kind of like a moon. Oh, my God. Uh, and no. so people were thinking – oh, well, this guy's like a great actor and he has history playing CGI characters. And so what if he's playing Darth Plagueis? And so he had not showed up in the series yet, right? And so a lot of people were like, oh, he's definitely playing Plagueis and we're going to see him in this episode. And so I was kind of like, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah. probably so. Then when he showed up, there was a bit of a crush inside because I was like, oh, we're not getting Plagueis. There he is. Yeah, yeah. He's a senator. Okay, that's it. We're mm -hmm. not getting Plagueis. And then Plagueis creeped out from the shadows like a ghoul. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> yep. did not expect it at all. Um, and I was, yeah, thoroughly pleased. I mean, to, um, to be completely honest, I, I read um, Plagueis when it mm -hmm. came out. But, um, I, I, you know, I, I don't have a huge affection for that particular part of the eu mm -hmm. i read a ton of the eu in the early 90s like the dark empire and the thrawn trilogy and all that stuff and i did really enjoy a lot of the uh like <sighs> prequel era eu but for so something about Plagueis and stuff I, I don't know if it was just that to me i felt like star wars was over at that point sure you know what i mean yeah it was like yeah, it's like movies were over and, you know, I just mm -hmm. I really wasn't into it at that point anymore. It's a good audiobook. I would listen to it if you want to take a second and like yeah. enjoy it. There's some things that does really well for the Phantom Menace and you know, like considering that movie as well and Minichlorians and all that stuff. Yeah, um, but I just didn't have a super strong attachment to the character, you know, in that regard. Okay. Um, so. Um, but it was super awesome to see him in live action. What, what I guess what I'm trying to say is I really appreciated seeing him. I just don't have any of the baggage of caring about what his quote unquote canon story was mm -hmm. in that book. So whatever yeah. they want to do with him in this new uh, version of the character, I'm totally down for. So I'm, I'm very much of the line. Like the book is damn near perfect for me. It's my favorite EU book. I've listened to oh, wow. it. I'm listening to it right now. I got three hours left. I started it a few weeks ago, and I'm like, I want to listen to it just in case he shows up. And he does, uh, <laughs> which I called, by the way, from the very first episode. I said that fucker was showing up, and he did. Uh, so uh, he's there. And uh, when he shows up, right, um, it made me really consider, like, oh, this show really is so much more about, you know, like the creation of life than it was anything else before this. Like, that's the central plot. And yeah. um, it was bold to do it in the middle of the episode. They're like, I'm sorry, damn near the beginning, like within the first 13 it was, minutes. It's it. basically the my, beginning. Yeah. Bold, man. I remember looking at, at my um, phone and being like, the show's been on like 14 minutes. Like, yes. what the hell is going on? Yes. Yeah. Like, you have, <laughs> you usually wait for that. Like, the Yoda was a good stinger, right? But it's yeah. also a good, uh oh, this could lead into the next, you know, season. Whereas this Plagueis thing was like, before the, even the whole action of the episode happened, we're going to give you a nugget that fans have been waiting for for 20 years now, since 2005. And look, I was going to show that clip clip real quick. This is, uh, yeah, this is exciting. I'm not going to play with any audio, um, but you can see it right here. I was not expecting it to be done this mm -hmm. way. Very pull out, very like, uh, 
feels kind of a little bit like Harry Potter. You know what I mean? Those like the Dementors. You know a little, I mean? The way the hand kind of comes yeah. around there. I was like, yeah. and I knew instantly. I knew in my gut. And then it was Ugh. this shot. Oh my god. So freaking and creepy. And is it just me or did they, I don't know, like they somehow managed to light his face so close yeah. to what it is like on the cover, like in oh, the, dude. On the cover of the book, you know? Yes, Reagan, crazy? hold on. Look, yeah. I'll, I pulled I pulled a photo up. This is the exact photo from the album cover. So it, <laughs> it does look damn near identical. <laughs> oh my god. It is, it is wow. wild. Terrifying. Isn't it's one incredible? to one comparison, actually. It really? Yeah, is. I'm yeah. gonna go back yeah. to oh it. Look at that. Wow. 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 God damn. Wow. That's <gasps> nuts. It's crazy. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. No, no, isn't that crazy? It's so it's good. No, but, no, Reagan, you are onto something. I'll, I'll pull an actual photo of Darth Plagueis up. Like, there's been only like I think it's like four or five official drawings from Lucasfilm from, of Darth Plagueis. So, like, there's not much we can go on. Uh, and, like, look, here's here's the one image. Let me share this image real quick. Yeah, this is the one that I saw, you know, like, someone enhanced the actual quality of it. Look at it. Uh, this is an official photo of Darth that's, Plagueis. Which, that's so terrible. unfortunate. Yeah, I, I don't that's, like the nose in this one. This <laughs> one's like that, That's the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah, that one's bad. That's straight up that straight up looks like Mac tonight. Yeah. <laughs> now, 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 it does. This I can get behind. Now this is Both the closer. one that it immediately evoked for me. Yeah. yeah. This is the one when I see those eyes, I see this this uh drawing right here. Yeah. And look, here's the most recent official picture of him. Yeah. They did a retouch up of that of that book cover. Um, the other really important one. My my little also... problem with that book cover too. I love that picture so much. Probably, um, yeah. Like, is that they do make a point in the book of saying that Sheev is frizzy, and yes. and we do know our our beloved, you know, our Ian. He is a frizzy man, and they made him a little too sleek on that cover. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is the other shot we can use as comparison as well. Yeah. Like you see a nose, but it's not quite a nose, and obviously, I think they make him look big. Just for the sake of the art of it, another good example of it like that. I think this is pretty, pretty this good. Is another one that brought me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah that brought, yeah. Uh, was brought to mind for me. This was great. Now, this is the best image that I see someone enhance. And obviously, I don't. I'm sure they did a full render of his face already. But like seeing just this was perfect enough. Just the Sith eyes, all of it, and like this, I don't like because it's someone else's artist rendition of it. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> that's yeah. awful. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like good for you. Good word. for you. I just I not just it. not for me. I'm I'm looking forward. I hope there is a, a Disney gallery, you know, making of of the acolyte, so we can get a little more um, into perhaps uh, the making of you know concept art or whatever they have yeah. that they can show us of Plagueis. We could finally get it, man. Because everyone for the longest time thought it was Snoke. I don't mind this one. This one's kind of cool. Look at the nose with like the nose holes in the side, kind of like Voldemort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, this is this is terrible though. This was like this looks like yeah. a yeah. Mess. <laughs> much like much like that universe, yeah. you know, that was written by someone who is a turf and whatever the fuck them. But uh, maybe <laughs> uh, going will <laughs> make you lose your nose. You know. Uh, now yeah. that picture, you know, that picture is from the Secrets of the Sith book. Yes. And that was like mm. the only new canon image of official Plagueis. image. Yeah, and so to me that was almost Lucasfilm saying, "Hey, we have not decided if he's still right. going to be that species." So yeah, yeah. I'm glad, and I'm that glad he settled on I, this new kind of tweaking. Yes, oh, yes, so creepy. The idea that he's on that island. If you think back to that final scene of Osha and Chimir, back on um, that island on the unknown planet, mm -hmm. and you think of it in the reference that he's there watching from the shadows it's kind yes. of terrifying and yeah. it's and it's, it's awesome terrifying. too because they're on this planet filled with cortosis like he's hiding in plain sight mm -hmm. they can't sense that he's there so yeah really, oh yeah really that's cool. smart oh it's so, so awesome. uh well you know, I don't know if you all noticed that the bed that Osha sleeps on too in that cave when she wakes up, there's like a giant tunnel at the that's basically the headboard. Oh, Did you all notice that? Oh. So can you imagine if like Plagueis is like sleeping and like oh. masturbating in oh. that tunnel? Oh. Stop. Yeah, stop. Yeah. He just like 
He's just he's crawling crab out. walking around the walls. Oh, at night and just sniffing her hair. Well, yeah, like, it's just like imagine him just like walking out uh, on the evening of that tunnel and stuff and looking at you. Just, oh. We still he's just walk around if... eating an Italian yeah. sub. Just <laughs> it is it is heart in, in a bathrobe. Yeah. Now, he's not wearing a sith robe. That's a bathrobe. He's yeah. just he's just like chilling. You so, know. Yeah. Look, let's be real too. Yeah. Got some bon me. That's what he got. Maybe Chimere doesn't know he's even there. Like that's another cool thing too. Like that, that's my assumption. Just, that's my thought because that's he's. Supposed, I, I I think he probably really? is really young, and I probably think that people are misconstruing what he oh. is in that scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, yeah. are you thinking that Chimere is the master then, or well, wants I, to be? Like, I think that Chimere. Um, yes, I think I think we're in a situation here where he was with Plagueis. He decided, yeah. mm, this ain't for me. I kind of want to mm -hmm. do my own thing. So he's looking for an acolyte to betray uh, or Plagueis. Yeah. Uh, you know, classic Sith move. So he can become the master and have his own apprentice. Um, and Plagueis is going to potentially, sh you know, use that against him here. You know, I think that's kind of, if we look at the way Sith always betray each other, that's sort of, but I think, you know, when when Plagueis confronts Chimere about this, Chimere is going to say, hey, this girl was created by the Force. Like, mm -hmm. like don't you want to know about that? Like, Whatever yeah. happens, it probably ends up Plagueis and Osha, if it's anything. Mm -hmm. you know? Which I would really like. And, and, yeah. then, and then, you know, in some capacity... I would love if Palpatine knew Osha too. Like there, you can do a lot of fun stuff with it, and like we know who comes out on top. Let's be real for a second. It's, it's torso. Oh, hold on. It's oh it's no. Oh no. <laughs> it won't pull up. Do you know that's supposed to be <laughs> Bob Newhart? That's Bob Newhart. It's Obi Wan Kenobi, on. right? The image, right. image is that Bob Newhart? Oh, that is Bob Newhart. So okay. I wanted to round up this discussion. Obviously, there was one last thing I wanted to bring up uh, as well, and it was that wonderful picture of Yoda, but it won't download for whatever reason. But, ma'am, that Yoda sees at the end. Were, were y'all – was that did that satisfy y'all? I, I wasn't expecting it. I was very excited, and I'm very curious as to what Vernestra is going to ask him. I wonder yeah. if she's going to fill him in. I, I mean, right then and there, or if we're going to see that later in next season, I don't know. It's just, it's Star Wars. It's green people behaving like dickheads. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Fuck the green no. people. It was a great, it was a great cameo. That to me is a cameo. There is differences yeah, between yeah. cameos and like, you know, actual characters in the show. Yeah. That was 100% a tease. You know, Yep. For that, I just I like was a little afraid. The Republic at all, you knew it was coming a little bit. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, absolutely. Uh, I was a little afraid that certain people who were like, uh, you know, when she started going in there and saying master, it was like, oh no, if people who think that she's a Sith Lord are <laughs> going to be right, I'm going to yep. jump off of my apartment building. Um, but luckily, <laughs> uh, that is still a stupid uh, thing to think. Uh, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, I thought it could have been good, better as personally. Personally, I think the sh the wipe into credits was Osha should have been like Osha and Chimere, uh, kind of standing looking on the horizon. Yeah, Dude, this is like a little a little credit sting and stuff yeah, like that. Was. You know, it was really yeah. Nice. This was like awesome. Marvel uh, credits uh, scene. Yeah, and it's, this is it's, very very Marvel. I'm yeah. glad it's very possible it. that it was envisioned to go after the credits and they were yeah. like, well, you know, I feel like they've done a lot of experimenting with stuff like this, you know, like mm -hmm. they did the Boba Fett on the throne thing with Mando yeah. and we haven't really seen them go back to that style yeah. of kind of announcing things. And, you know, like we've seen different ways of starting shows with like the way Ahsoka started with the blue text or versus yeah. the way like Rogue One starts or what have you. They haven't really found a consistent way to open and close shows. So this did feel like maybe it was originally meant to go after the credits, but they moved it up because they thought people might not see it. Yes, I agree with that. Nobody mm -hmm. would be going all the way. Like, no one's looking for like a Star Wars end credits. Like it's just, no. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
All I can think of is though how like remember famously um Iowa Devery in her review of Empire Strikes Back was like nobody told me Yoda was so ugly. I only know baby Yoda. <laughs> oh <laughs> my idiot. god. And like this, <laughs> this whole she, he just looks like an old man's testicle. It's horrible. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. No, like I I it made my cousin's son jump on like the edge of his seat. Which is that's what it's for. Oh, that's you know, that's you know awesome. that that to me. But I this think it was more... also a good little thing for like for the people who came into this, and this is like they don't know too much else yeah. about Star Wars except the characters they've seen on like birthday party plates and things. You know what yes. I mean? Like, um, like it, that's it's the oh, this connects. You know what I mean? And it mm-hmm, gives them yeah. like a, so I think it was you, Adam, who said in the chat, it gives them an anchor point to like yeah. try to figure this all out. Yeah. Um, I thought it was brilliant. I, I thought it was a great way to tie it all together. And like because of Jared Eli, sorry. <laughs> well, I don't hate Yoda. Fuck Jared. I love Fuck Yoda. Jared. I love obviously Yoda. a puppet is the best. Obviously a puppet. Is it ketamine Yoda or is it I, like? Is it <laughs> I I want it. I want it to be Bernie. I give me the goddamn Bernie Sanders Yoda puppet, please, for the love of God. Please. I am once again asking. <laughs> I once again asking for the Bernie Sanders Yoda puppet, please. Um. <laughs> No, but to uh, to uh, really oh run God. all this out. Are we? Uh, I'm going. I'm saying now. I'm going into. I'm satisfied. I want more of this I'm show. Very satisfied. I want yes. more Plagueis. There are some things that I thought could have been done better. Uh, just say midichlorians, please, for God's sake. <laughs> they did. <laughs> for the <laughs> love of God, this it's is the time you can count. say it. Like it's it's I think they did. No, they never said midichlorians. They said count. I, I made it, listen. I made it a point I to say. I said this. Score. I said this in several group chats. I said if they said if, if they said midichlorians at any point in the show, I was going to take a one hundred dollar ad out on YouTube for my <laughs> my video essay. I was not joking. I was going to make sure. Daddy is saving money at this point shit. right now. Yeah. So they didn't say. They said M count, and it was in the there, seven. I don't. Until we get a prequel kid, prequel kid in it. Well, not that Leslie necessarily isn't, but like, um, I don't know, man. I don't know what it is. If it's like this mandate, they're like, this sounds better. Like, if we can get a prequel kid who likes the word midichlorian and stuff, just like, just, just slide it in there. Just slide it in there. We're, no one hates midichlorians anymore. It's funny. the people who do. Who cares? They yeah. over there. They're over there. They can like uh, be mad that someone said the M word over there. You know. So. Oh, it's these kind of people. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I wonder what Davy Havoc does think about midichlorians. Oh man. Uh, no. Alice's demon. Good night. I loved it. Give us midichlorians, Joe. Anything else you want? To say? Any last criticisms before we close this thing out? You know what? I loved the show. I um, am, I was very happy with everything they did. I loved it. I am not satisfied though because I'm ready for more. I want more. I want more okay. Darth Plagueis. I want him to be creepy. Mm. And I want to see him writhing around in a little negligee next season. I'm ready. I'm excited. <laughs> I want to see him playing like a yeah. big, like evil organ. Like a, yes, you know, truly. A I fan like, of the opera. I, like I truly want. I to saw really Holly get into it. I saw Holly Fry. She kept posting pictures of uh, Nosferatu. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was very Nosferatu. So yeah, yeah very like, Universal monster kind of vibe. Yeah. But yeah. like less a less sexy, like not Gerard Butler uh playing yeah. uh, that song. Oh, yeah, this oh guy, god, this guy Miss Murph, he's so scary. <laughs> uh Reagan, I know you want to tell a story about this person too. He Reagan. just doesn't like me. He doesn't like me. Um how so I you just to... say that. How does he how do you uh, know okay? That? So this is this is what happened. I used to manage um a kind of like gothy, like punk rock, like sort like in, in the West Village. Like it was it was like a step above hot topic with like it also it, it had like kind of dirtier stuff in it too. And we used to have a lot of musicians come in all the time. And I got that job. I didn't like listen to any of that sort of music. Yeah. And I didn't like, I didn't dress like a cyber raver or anything like that. You know, I didn't wear demoni boots or anything like that. I just didn't know, but I liked everybody. You know, I was very yeah. nice to everybody. And I worked with this girl, Alexis, who was just like, she is, was like the, the, the picture of a girl who would be like obsessed with like AFI and like anything Davey Havoc did. And he walked in. I did not know who he was. I was like vaguely polite to him, but I was in a bit of a bad mood. I didn't, nothing. I didn't really like, I didn't help him. I didn't, How he entered like, the I just, door? He entered and I was just like, whatever. And, um, and he kind of just like stood there and he was just like waiting for me to like, 
click into recognizing who he was and I didn't. And I feel like he could have taken one look at me at that point. I was in like a flowered sundress and like, I don't know, whatever. And I just, it wasn't, it wasn't clicking at all. It was like me. I, I remember it horribly also that we used to sell these like arm warmers and leg warmers that had cuts in them. Like, oh, yeah. as, you know, like, oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Um, but I've like, been so to a hot like topic. I was very incongruous with all of that stuff. And work. like, and, and, I didn't know. And then Alexis came out and made this huge fuss and then explained who he was and like an idiot. I'm like, Oh, are you in a band? Like, do you, do you play music? No. And, um, and he just like, he just like went stone faced and he made like, he, he like, they, he got a bunch of stuff and like he left and then he came back and made this big show of, of he, like, he's like, a, you know, like he had like backstage passes and tickets and all this stuff. And no. he made a very big, he, him and his people like made a very big point of like giving it to Alexis and just completely ignoring me. Like, I was just like standing there, just completely like thinking I was going to get it too. And, and he just like looked <laughs> me up and down and just, that's see, awful. like, I just didn't know. I didn't know. That's, it, wasn't my, that's, it wasn't my bag. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Like that—that's a great story for him to go. Like, oh yeah, I went in there and they were. She was like, "Yeah, hey, you in a band?" And I'm like, "Fuck mm -hmm. yeah, I am!" And I gave her a backstage pass. That's how you handle that. You don't just like go. I like, wasn't. You know what? Though, but I was. I was also not attractive at the time, so uh, that probably oh, contributed to it quite a bit. Fuck, um, that. fuck that. But whatever. Anyway. Character actor Dylan Baker thinks I'm delightful, so there is always gonna that's, be that's all that matters. matters. Yes, and look, Reagan, you you asked specifically before this thing started. Talk about Bob Newhart. I know you have a relationship with Bob Newhart. Tell me um, more about that. Well, okay, so I am uh, through a series of uh, weird incidents. I am, uh, I am, I admin um, uh, like a, a, a big Newhart fan community that his son is in, and that he's definitely in my thoughts tonight. But a lot of the actors from um, the Newhart series are in it. Um, some of them are my personal friends, uh, Tony Papenfuss, who played uh, the other brother Daryl on, or no, actually the first Daryl, not the other brother Daryl, but he, um, you know, he sent me a whole bunch of like, like gear that he had kept from the original show. And it's like this, wow. this really sweet, sweet community of like very weird people who just love Bob's work. My friend, uh, my friend Brett, who, you know, writes for a lot of entertainment publications um, and is currently, I think he's working on a, um, a biography about Hayden Work right now. Uh, he, you know, he got, he's met Bob many times and interviewed him and they were very, very close friends. Um, he's, I know he's devastated, but Bob was, I mean, he was a, a pioneer and the reason why, you know, his, his very, oh, I, I love classic sitcoms, but like I, I he, just, his writing was always so clever and so punchy, but the way that he could make comedy just out of a look and his whole persona was always i think so it, it's i think it's very easy for all of us to connect to because um he always played like the one like normal um kind of well-adjusted guy surrounded by like muppet sometimes literally yes muppet yeah and yeah. idiots you know and i think that's that's we all relate to that feeling so much like we always like it's always us just kind of watching other people mouth breathe and kind of staring into the void <laughs> trying to react to it and he just he did it so so beautifully and all of his you know they had the most incredible relationship with him and i know a lot of people who've worked on a lot of tv shows because i worked in film and tv and uh it's very very rare that you you know that you hear stories that are just so glowingly positive like from behind the scenes of a show he took care of his casts incredibly well they had a, a wonderful relationship he always like you know he always had his long-standing like comedy partners um like like they they would be recurring guests and recurring stars on just everything he did he kept all of his relationships for like 50 60 70 years and in you know in the last years of his life he often referenced kind of being um like being one of the only ones left and and Damn. i know like you know it's no matter how much you are a legend and no matter how much the world adores you i also think that um like there there's a loneliness and a poignancy to getting to that point in your life yeah. but i feel like a lot of a, a lot of generations maybe um they will only know him from elf you know uh, but he, like, I urge you, if you, if you don't know his career, um, there is a, uh, his two shows, Bob Newhart show and Newhart, they play 
on the catchy channel, I believe like from four to 5 PM almost every day and more than likely next weekend, because he has passed away, they will show uh, a marathon of every episode of the show. Um, you know, uh, it's, if you, if you like, if it's the Facebook group is fans of the show, new heart, it's mostly populated by very, very elderly people and my cousin and myself, but <laughs> a lot of the actors are there. And also I guess this is a good moment to say I had the, uh, cause one of my friends, who was on the new heart show is also in this terrible 80s film called joysticks which i really really yes. want to do a bomb that gaming episode about because it's batshit insane yes. um but yeah this is like an it's it, this is it's a bigger loss than i think probably most people I here agree. might realize but um yeah maybe it's worse people like Bob, always there's a there's a bit of canon mm -hmm. here that i like to look at bob newhart he is portraying old obi-wan but with young obi-wan's lightsaber that's oh. badass yes yeah. I like that. Well, Big Bang Theory. They're paying attention. I like this. I like this. Yeah. Rest rest in peace, Bob, man. We, mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, a long, happy life, I hope. You know, I mean, the man was 94, one. right? Yep. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. And made a lot well, of people laugh along the way, too. That's all you could hope for. That's that's what, you know, that's what the, the point of comedy is, you know? We're all, we're all comedians here. We all think we're funny, you know? And I'm glad <laughs> Bob you are. Glad Bob Newhart uh, played a little bit into our psyche there, but um, we should get some plugs in because this is the last one. I I, I haven't really talked to Jerry about this. I'm gonna be out of the country in two weeks, so we might have to. Take Where are you going? Uh, Katie's family's taking us to Cosmo because we never had an actual um, what do they Ooh, call a um, honeymoon. honeymoon? Never had a technical honeymoon. So Scotty, Scotty is actually time. trying to do a, a a 80 days around the world type of yes. thing in a, in a what? hot air balloon. Yes, but yeah. it's giving me a great time to leave the country, Scotty. It's giving me filling up Joe. <laughs> so we'll see if Scotty comes back. He's so, gonna yeah, come. Just, no, just just come back. he'll come. He'll come back. He'll sometime. come on my back. I make. Uh, I will make sure of it. <laughs> so nothing to plug as of right now. Um, thank you to everyone that was a part of this series. The bomb back light was an absolute blast to put together and and do. And you know, we've had a lot of friends come on the show from. Reagan all the way to Adam and Joe being in between. And, you know, we've, we've been very lucky to have some friends come and hang out with us. And uh, I have nothing to plug other than that. Watch the um, uh video essay. That would be helpful to most people right now who are media illiterate. Uh, Joe, you want to plug what you got going on? Because I know what you got going on. Hold on. I have so many things going on, you guys. Um, but no, I'm just, I'm at Joe Ragana on all social media. I'm live on Twitch multiple times a week. So make sure to follow me there if you want to watch me and hang out mm -hmm. with me more on gaming. And I have merch. Feel free to buy my merch or not. It's up to you. Um, if you want to look cool, buy it. then buy it. If you don't, then you want to look like a real lame loser, then don't buy it. That's fine. And I respect that choice for you. <laughs> Um, it's not. It's never a choice I would make because I like being hot, sexy, and cool. But you know, other people have other things going on, and that's your prerogative. That's right. Um, that's right. We all have our own vibe. If your vibe is lame, then don't buy it. But I love I you. Honestly, um, the sweatpants. <laughs> those sweatpants look immaculate. They look like they're okay. probably like very comfortable. And so yes. I'm gonna have to get some of those. The yes, Love Island J O. The white I ones are J O. The white one just shows your package the best. Is that and why you chose that color? Absolutely, I did. Yes. <laughs> um, we're not allowed to wear underwear with those. Um, and you know, other than that, that's all I have really going on. I love you guys. I'll be here um, again someday, I'm sure, as soon as Very Scotty uh, finds yeah, interest really. in me again. Let's me out of the cage. But thank you guys so much for having me for the past several weeks. It's been the best eight weeks of my life. Um, I love you, dude. It's all been heart. so too. meaningful to me because you know, I, you know, so much of the Star Wars community uh, wants to use my follower account on Twitter, but not actually acknowledge me by, you know, by actually following me or interacting with me at all. So it really does mean a lot that everyone on Bombay has, has always been so kind to me, and and everyone who you know is friends with Bombay has is also very supportive of me. So. When you guys asked me for a list of people who I wanted to bring on, I gave you a list of people who genuinely have been kind and acknowledged me. Um, so, you know, uh, shout out to everyone uh, who's been on and everyone Hell who yeah. hosts the show and everyone who is always nice to me. I love you guys. And the people who um, follow me but aren't kind to me and don't really actually have any interest in me other than my follower account, I hope you have the best day ever. <laughs> I so love you, Joe. In wishing you just totally did the Yoda side eye as you said that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I mean. You know what I mean. 
Yeah. And look, our, our another reoccurring reoccurring uh, guest host, wonderful Reagan. Reagan, tell us tell us where we could find you. I've got your uh, Twitter pulled up right here. So okay, so I am Regoba on Twitter. Um, ignore that picture because I think that is a, a Wikipedia unfollow me because they think I'm a sex bot. Um, oh, you're you're that's not the reason. Oh, that's you're not slaying. the reason. Serving. Just yeah. saying. Don't they, ever feel. Don't no, ever, they're Zionists. Don't ever feel <laughs> guilty like about being hot. Picture. Don't ever feel guilty about being hot and sexy and cool. Um, I am Newt Reagan on TikTok. I'd love it if you guys are on TikTok to come <laughs> follow me because I could definitely yes. use it. Yes, there. absolutely. I am Oysters on the Half Shirt on Instagram just to make it as confusing as possible. <laughs> and next month, I don't. I probably should not put this yet because it's the, the 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 T's aren't crossed and the I's aren't dotted quite yet uh i'm going to be i'm going to be a hostess of the alamo draft house <gasps> movie parties if you happen to be in the new york city metro area oh, that's um awesome. and and you ever want no to way. come to a movie party um i will be there as your host and if you're my friend you can probably be my plus one um but yeah and i do have uh so i have i have a voice i have a voice work gig that i can't quite talk about i auditioned for it last month um it's it's we're gonna probably start recording um in october um it's it's going to drop probably december i'm really excited i haven't done voice work in a long time so i do have that but i can't i can't plug it yet but as soon as i can i will make sure that i tell you guys um and i'm on epic confrontations uh right. i don't know i'm constantly recording it and i never know when it's on you know, i can tell you he's in the chat uh but i love you guys truly um i i you know i when I, I think it's, I, I was, I don't mean to make this run longer than it needs to, but like, I was, I was kind of thinking about this the other day. Like, um, I was, I was so terribly, terribly lost, like in the middle of lockdown when I, when I found you guys and we talked about this a lot. And, um, up until that point, like the Star Wars community had never been particularly welcoming or nice to me as I told Connor I think Connor and I were randomly in the same Star Wars like uh Facebook group and I think I got told in there that my mouth should never be open unless a dick was inside of it so it wasn't really a, a pleasant place to be and I always felt very stupid because like my you know my opinions were not as versed as some Star Wars people and they're still not a lot of them are still very visceral but you never make me feel dumb you always take my opinion very seriously no matter how off the wall it is um and you're you're very gentle to my neurodivergence and you treat me with a lot of love and respect and i love and respect you too so well that's, I mean, that's why friend. we love you heart we're here if, we're if here i can if I can't, Reagan, you are one of the most eloquent people I've ever met in my entire life. And so fuck whoever puts you down. <laughs> you listen. But that's the thing is you've got the you 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 listen, you've got the the uh like just the you you've got an e a easy way of speaking, but you are very yes. like very, very eloquent and very fun to listen to. A very in very interesting person. So uh, fuck anyone who doesn't like Reagan, because here uh, all my homies love Reagan and hate the people who hate Reagan. So uh, you can fuck <laughs> off. But we yes. we love you. And Thank look, you. I, I gotta say this too. This has been a, such a great time talking with this you from beginning to end, and it's kind of cool that we got to do the book in. Maybe maybe we'll keep this going. Uh, and of course, the most reoccurring one of them all, Adam Fraser. Adam, what? where can the people find you, my favorite people in the world, right here? Man. Right I don't have a thing to plug. I'm on Twitter. I don't know why. It's fucking terrible. Why are we on there? I don't know. You know, because uh, we have a Blue Sky other. account. I'm not on there. I haven't signed into Blue Sky for months. Really. <laughs> but, uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I have a newsletter where I write about weird stuff every now and then. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm just. I love you uh, too, Eli. Sorry. I'm just uh, hanging around writing about Star Wars on Twitter and. Uh, alien Romulus and other stuff I find uh, exciting while uh, the world falls apart. So <laughs> that's right, brother. That's, that's all you can it. do. Adam, hey, I'll say it here. We we said at the end of every one of them, skeleton crew finale, probably like in uh, I'm thinking like February ish time. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you there, brother. I'll skeleton see you there, bro. So uh, all that being said, um, since. Adam is, of course, the last guest. Had not had a chance to say this. Um, by all means, Adam, you know. Well, hold on. Please. Hold on. 
Hold on. I will be contractually contractually f uh, flogged by Michael oh. McCoy if I do not oh, say, say it, that say the it. Ionized <clears throat> Bastards finale is coming in the next couple of weeks, probably. It's coming. It is coming, <laughs> and it is going to come hard. Yeah, it's a solid plug. Uh, so you Lucas film story you group, hire Michael coming. McCoy. Hire Michael McCoy. He's know, a better a writer than half of what right you got. Yes. Michael truly needs to write an act in Star Wars book because the the man uh so the man it's is disgusting. just absolutely talent. Absolute it's fucking disgusting. Yeah. And he has put us through the ringer this season and uh as he his tagline says you'll never you'll never know what hit you. Um we're about to find out who hit yeah, us. <laughs> it's a good crew. It's a good crew. So follow ionized bastards y'all. Go uh, on uh on all remaining systems YouTube channel and check out Michael's short stories while you're there. Cause yes. like Reagan said, he's a fucking badass at writing. He needs to write an actual fucking Canon star Wars novel. Um, Swagman, make it happen. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Boom. Anyway, my wife just said, wrap it up. I haven't seen her in two weeks. Woo! Uh, Adam, what should Woo! the good people do? Stay bomb bad. Oh, oh hell yeah. There it is. I'm just hard. like Darth Plagueis. Oh, oh, beautiful. <laughs> Did you say impossible, Pasquale? <gasps> Only kidding, Chucky. I've changed my tune because I finally thought of a possible dream that we can all share. What oh, is that, Pasquale? It's a dream about a world where nobody is poor or sick or hungry. Oh, oh, now that's a dream we can make come true. I'm gonna make a change. For once in my life It's gonna feel